Hello, this is Billy Cord from the Nostalgia Mall, and we're back with a laptop that we haven't seen in a very long time. This is a Compaq Armada 7730 MT from about 1997, I believe. Specs include, a, I believe it's a 150 megahertz Pentium MMX. Originally had, I believe, a 2 gig hard drive, and originally had 16 megs of RAM, which has been upgraded to about, I think, 80 megs. And the hard drive has been upgraded to a 2 gig CF card which is um, now installed right here in the little dry bay and we've got a CD-ROM drive um, that's the wrong color but it works <laughs> now um, last time we saw this computer was on my Christmas Day video this past year which was about nine months ago <laughs> and it's a great little laptop I like it because it's it runs Windows 95 beautifully. It's obviously it wilts from its era, and it's a wonderful DOS gaming laptop. Um, it has the perfect um, sound card for everything, and everything sounds great. You get the perfect amount of extended DOS memory as well, so everything works great. Now, why don't I use this laptop that much? Well, here's why. The hinges on this laptop are very very decrepit <laughs> and it makes it very very difficult to use lying in bed so um, that's why this laptop doesn't get as much use um, I guess there could be a way to tighten the hinges but more than likely it just needs brand new hinges which I would probably require getting a whole new screen for considering its age so what we're going to do in this video is I haven't really used this computer since um, last December when I showed it on video the last time so I figured why not put it back into service. Um, I probably won't use it much but it'll be there for when I'm in the mood. So the operating system we're going to put on here is Windows 95 of course. That's what came with it originally. I'm sure it'll run 98 pretty well as well but uh, I've already got a laptop running 98 so Anyway, let's go ahead and power it on. The CF card in this computer is completely wiped clean. Okay, just did its memory test. It's probably going to throw up a no OS error. error. Or it's just going to boot into MS-DOS from the uh, Packard Bell this uh, computer, this card used to be in. That's strange. I thought I wiped this card. <laughs> Obviously it's not going to boot into 3.1, but I'll go ahead and put in a CD to boot from. Normally these computers would have a uh, diagnostics partition on here. That's how old compact laptops would um, handle the BIOS. Instead of putting it on a BIOS chip, it would be put on a special hard drive partition. But, I don't have a floppy drive to install it from for this computer. And I can't make CD versions of it either, so we're just going to have to go BIOS. Okay, I'm booting from a Windows 98 CD, but that's just because the Windows 95 CD is not bootable. Right now, I just want to boot without CD-ROM support so I can get into F-Disk. Let's see how the partitions look. Okay, we'll just delete that. And not hit that microphone on the Packard Bell next to me. Okay, go to delete. Partition having to, having to do this at a crazy angle. There we go. Create a new one. Make it. I'm sure it'll be Fat32. At least the CF card adapter works. I just got it in the mail today. I was going to make this video two days ago. But the CF card adapter I was going to use in this computer was broken, so I had to throw it out and order a new one. And thankfully, 
the seller I bought this from on eBay was extremely fast when it came to shipping. I only got it in two days. So, highly recommend. Okay, we'll reboot. Boot from CD-ROM. This time we'll boot with CD-ROM support. So the big thing I like about this laptop is it's it's white. It, it, it's a, a white color laptop, which gives it a very very retro look. <laughs> okay. One thing I want to do is I want to set the date and time because it thinks it's uh, January 4th, 1980. And obviously it isn't. <laughs> it's actually August the 17th of 2019. And the time is 14.58. Now normally you would do that in your BIOS, but... I can't put one on here until I find a working floppy drive for the system. If anyone has a floppy drive that can go in this laptop's modular bay, hit me up. So, now I need to format the drive. And we'll make it bootable. And it's going fairly quick because it's a CF card and it's only 2 gigs. <laughs> so this shouldn't take any time at all. Again, we're not installing 98 on here even though we're booting from its CD. We're just doing this um, so we can uh, boot from it and put the 95 files on the hard drive. Okay, we'll we'll just name the drive, I guess, Compaq. This is a very Flying Scotsman approved video, I imagine. <laughs> so, we'll do our normal uh, Windows 9X setup routine. We'll make a Windows directory. And within that, an Options directory. And within that, a cabs directory. Okay, and we'll move over to that directory. And we'll remove the Windows 98 CD from the drive and insert a Windows 95 CD. This is kind of similar to uh, how we set up Windows ME on the Latitude C610 in a way but not exactly. And we'll copy the files from D colon slash win95. And this will take about a minute or so. Thankfully the CD-ROM drive in this computer, while it's uh, the wrong color, the drive functions beautifully. Okay, now we can uh, remove this CD. We don't need any more CDs for the time being. And we'll do a Control Alt Delete. That boot should boot straight into the drive. Once it does its memory test, of course. Alright, we're at a Windows 98 command prompt. We'll go to the CAPS directory. Slash is to skip the uh, scan disk. All right, we're at the first screen for the setup. And one thing I want to do, I need to remember the key command to do uh, panel stretching, so it'll fill the whole screen. I think it's uh, function T. And there we go. All right, welcome to Windows 95 Setup. And just like on the C610 in our previous video, because this laptop doesn't have a floppy drive in it at the moment, it's going to, Setup is going to try to seek the non-existent floppy drive and probably get hung up a little bit, so... 
at some point that probably will happen here probably right here but if this happens to you on your on a similar laptop you're setting Windows 95 98 or ME on um, do not panic it's um, just trying to seek a floppy drive that doesn't exist just give it about a minute or so to get its head together and everything will be okay and there we go and we don't want to install into Windows.000 just plain old Windows okay now to put in the uh, product key it's a sad thing to realize but I actually know the uh, product key for Windows 95 by heart now I've done it so many times uh, I really need a life, don't I? <laughs> okay, put in the user info, Billy Core, the Nostalgia Mall, and uh, we'll tell it what to, what hardware to detect and what not. Don't have a network card in here at the moment, but there will be later in the video. Definitely do have a PCMCIA socket, and. Uh, don't have a SCSI controller so that'll uh, save us a little bit of time while it analyzes the hardware alright we're at the component selection screen don't need accessibility options need all the accessories no communication tools since I'm not going to be using the modem on here disk tools um, let's get rid of all that because certain disk tools on a uh, that comes with this operating system that if you use it on a CF card, it can cause very, very um, bad things to happen. <laughs> and we do want all the multimedia. And we'll worry about the network later. And um, here we go. This is um, one of my favorite um, Windows setup processes in the world because the artwork on these um, on the side here I've always thought looked really really good for some reason of course it would look better if it wasn't um, stretched out like it is on this uh, LCD screen <laughs> another thing I like about Windows 95 setup is unlike um, 98 and ME it's a lot quicker <laughs> For some reason, 98 and ME, um, I guess because they're bigger operating systems, takes a lot longer to install than 95. So, I'll just um, let it do its thing, and I'll resume the video once it's done. Alright, just about at the end here. 99%. And here we go. Preparing to restart your computer. And we'll tell it OK to that. And we should be seeing one of my favorite computer um, images in, my, in the whole world <laughs> in a moment. Starting Windows 95 and getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. I love that screen so much. Whenever we would reformat the Packard Bell Legend 822 CDT, I would always look forward to seeing this as a kid. The um, equivalent to this screen, Windows 98, I thought never really looked all that impressive. <laughs> okay, final part of setup here. Right, setting up hardware and plug-and-play devices. Okay, it's copying some stuff right now. This is another good reason to have the setup files copied to the hard drive because a lot of times in Windows 95 setup at this point it will um, lose the ability to access the CD-ROM for some reason and if it has to copy files from the Windows 95 CD-ROM well it can't do that. It's a very weird bug in Windows 95 but if you copy the files to the hard drive you can avoid that. Alright, looking pretty good now. So start menu shortcuts. Surprisingly, it hasn't gotten too badly hung up on the non-existent floppy drive. 
And as soon as I say that, it gets hung up on the non-existent floppy drive, doesn't it? <laughs> and my big mouth. Okay, finally got its head together. <laughs> and we are in the Eastern Time Zone. Don't have a printer. It looks like we got 256 colors, which is nice, so it must have picked up the display driver. But no sound driver just yet, but I will have a remedy for that soon. And here's the Windows 95 screen we all know and love. Although, um, growing up, I don't remember there being the Microsoft Internet Explorer thing on it. <laughs> Okay, finalizing settings. And I'm back at the Windows desktop on this computer since first time since Christmas. <laughs> okay, let's see what drivers it picked up and did not pick up. Okay, it didn't pick up the display driver. And it kind of picked up the sound driver, but it didn't. But I do have the driver for that. And for some reason, um, Windows 95 likes to automatically disable the PCMCIA slots. And I don't know why it thinks I'm installing Windows. But we're going to have to restart again. And the reason I'm worried about the PCMCIA slots right now is because, well, in order to put the uh, drivers on everything for this computer, and for some reason, instead of restarting it, it sh completely shuts the computer down because Windows 95, for some reason, thinks that you're physically going to install the PCMCIA slots themselves into the computer. Never understood that, but anyway, what I was getting at was in order to install the drivers and copy other software over, I have this 8 gigabyte CF card and this PCMCIA adapter which will allow this to see this card as a secondary hard drive which is really really convenient I also, not only do I have drivers on here but I also have um, all my game files on here for games I commonly play on here so I don't have to worry about searching for the CD-ROMs all the time for the, for the games so once we're booted back into Windows we'll pop that in Go almost there. It slides in right here. We'll do it from this angle. That KBM switch is kind of blocking it. There we go. sure why that came up. <laughs> and I knocked the camera around a little bit, so I'm going to have to do some readjusting. There we go. And it's going to search for the uh, non-existent floppy drive again. Oh boy. Love it when it does that. Not really. Okay, found the driver. And that sound means it's working. And here we go. And this folder right here has all the drivers and software we need to get this computer functional. And we'll just copy it to the desktop. Make it a little bit less messy while installing. I believe HP still has these drivers on their website. At least they did a while back. I don't remember. I don't know if they still do or not. And if they do, grab them while you can before they do eventually take them down. That's what I like about Dell. They keep all of their drivers on their server, dating all the way back to the early 90s, which is really, really convenient for uh, vintage computer enthusiasts like myself, who. Um, sometimes has trouble finding said drivers elsewhere and here we are let's see we got video card driver which is installed manually it appears 
So we'll go to Device Manager. And it's going to seek that non existent drive again. Okay, we'll tell it to search to the desktop. And video, disk 1. Okay, it's an S3 video card. Very common type of um, video card back in the day. Okay, gotta redirect it to the driver. We'll reboot later. Now let's install the uh, audio drivers. Again, I think I have to do that manually. Like I said, try to install it, but didn't quite make it. Okay, we'll direct it to the location on the desktop. I believe it's right there. And uh, sometimes Windows 95 likes to forget where the driver is. <laughs> and you have to politely remind it. Again, we'll restart later. Now next is... Uh, what do we have, actually? Compact Diagnostics for Windows. We'll go ahead and install that. I, th I think the uh, video and audio drivers were the only real drivers we had to install on here. The rest is just like little uh, bits and bobs of utilities to get this um, computer running as smoothly as possible, like this. I do have a battery for this computer. Last time I used it in December, it worked fairly well, but it no longer has a charge in it, and whenever I try to power the computer on with the battery installed, it can't power on. So um, hopefully everything will um, be okay with that battery, and we crashed. Apparently... Uh, wasn't that catastrophic. <laughs> okay, so now, uh, and I know I'm doing this completely out of order. <laughs> Not sure what CC32H is. Oh, carbon copy. That's some software that came with the uh, laptop, but I'm not going to bother with that. I'm not exactly sure what it does. Okay, programmable key, keys utility. This is to configure the little uh, hot keys right here. Okay. Simple enough. We'll install the system enhancements for Windows 95. Restart later. I'm not exactly sure what that installs, but must do something. And a very, very special thing to me, at least for compact laptops at this time real mode support, which um, configures a special um, MS DOS mode with all the necessary drivers and all the necessary memory to run just about any DOS game you want. So this is a must-have on a compact laptop of this era. And we got some other stuff down here. Um, not sure what supplemental programs is. Um, it's probably going to want to. Yeah, it's going to want to make a uh, floppy disk. So we'll worry about that some other day. <laughs> so um, we can go ahead and restart. 
and we should have working video and audio on the other side. Okay, we're rebooted. It looks like we got a higher color depth now. And it's wanting to install some kind of PCI ISA bridge. And I'm also hearing thunder outside, and I checked the radar. There's a real, real uh, big thunderstorm right over Greensboro. Probably headed in my direction soon, so let's try and get this video done before I get blown away by a thunderstorm. <laughs> music to my ears. I don't know why that comes up now. But we can go ahead and uh, go to a higher resolution. This is an 800 by 600 display. And what the heck, we'll increase the color depth as well. And of course we'll restart. That looks a lot better. And we can go ahead and delete this driver folder. Yeah, the sky is very angry out there today. But with the very, very intense humidity we've had the last couple of days, thunderstorms are just going to have to happen. <laughs> so let's check our device manager, see if everything is accounted for. Everything except for PCMCIE card services and an unknown device, but that always comes up on this computer, so nothing out of the ordinary there. Even automatically picked up the modem, which will never get used on here. <laughs> so, um, next thing I want to install is my network card. Yes, I do have a network card for this computer. I got this little... Um, IBM 10100 Etherjet card. The little uh, breakout thing right here. So this will let me access my network on here. And again, we'll just slide this in. And the driver is on the 8 gig CF card. Okay. We'll direct it to the driver which is right here in the network folder and there we go alright want some work group info and other goodies like that and we'll name it we'll name the computer Compaq 7730 and work group and we'll call it under this description Compaq Armada 7730MT and so it can access um, the uh, modern style network from the 2010s we'll need to tell it to use TCP slash IP and we can get rid of NetBEUI and IPX I think there are some multiplayer games that use those protocols but I don't ever play those, and I don't have any friends to play multiplayer games with. Quite sad, really. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> well, this video got depressing. But anyway, is this everything we need? Oh yeah, I need to tell it how to log into my Virtual 2000 domain. And I get a lot of questions from people asking how I set up that domain. Well. A friend of mine set it up for me, so um, I don't know how I, how he did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm not going to be much help with you there. So uh, I believe that's everything we need. All right, Ugh. and the, of course the browse icon has to disappear, which makes my life a little bit harder than it should be. So I gotta figure out where the directory is. Okay, I think it's D. Unless it's already in there. Nah, it's not. Okay, it's D colon slash network, I think. There we go. And this will also give us internet access on this computer, but I would not recommend browsing the internet on this kind of computer. 
at all. Unless you just want to tell people you did. Right, we'll restart. Alright. Type that in there. Don't need a password. And that's network access working just fine on this laptop. Very, very, very good. And if you want further proof of, um, of this, well, look no further than this. We'll just do a, we'll just ping google.com and bam, it's able to access Google. <laughs> Okay, let's just uh, do a couple of little tests here. Okay, it's accessing the domain. Now, um, gameplay. We need to switch down to 640 by 480. Tell it to do it without restarting. And we'll do a panel stretch. Go to the humongous folder find a good game to uh, test out here. How's about Putt-Putt joins the parade and WinG is not installed even though it should be. <laughs> Don't know... It, 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 this happens every now and then on these humongous games. But no big deal. You should only have to really do this in Windows 3.1, and actually even there you shouldn't. But sometimes when it's being run from something other than a CD-ROM drive, I guess, it doesn't behave well. But once we get this little thing installed, Putt-Putt should load up with no problem. Alright, setup succeeded. Okay, let's try loading up Putt-Putt again. That's more like it. Speakers seem a little bit worn out on this laptop. Hi, I'm Papa. Come join me on my adventure. I'm ready to go. hate that radio show. All he ever does is talk about how wonderful he is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not going to play through the whole game, but that's just proof that it's working, and oh, that storm's getting close, I think. <laughs> so I better... Uh, hurry up and finish this video, but before we do, I just want to try out a DOS game. I'm not going to boot into DOS mode at the moment, just run run a DOS game through Windows. Should be uh, enough to prove that it works. So let's find the game I want him to play. Of course, it's all the way back at the top. <laughs> Adlib works. But sound doesn't. And it's probably disabled. There we go. Let's try that again. There we go. Looks pretty good on this display as well. I'm back. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I love the humor in this game. Okay, we'll do a quick game here. Okay, try to figure out the controls here. Okay, control to jump, alt to shoot, and spacebar to do nothing at all. <laughs> I have to admit, I've never really played too much of this game. It is a pretty good game, though. But as you can see, DOS games are working just fine on this laptop, and I'm sure once I get real mode DOS going on here, it'll work even better. Hold down your fire button for rapid fire. Uh, that should be enough to show that it's working. So, better go ahead and call this a video. It's gone on long enough. Okay, I'll go ahead and um, end the video here. Hope you enjoyed watching this. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.